What we're going to be going over here is activity-based product costing, or what they refer to as ABC costing or a costing system here. So we'll be working off this diagram here, and we're going to be doing it in terms of a manufacturing company here, but you could also be doing it in terms of a company that's providing a service or selling a service here. So with any costing system here, you're, it's going to involve here, our product costing system is going to involve here allocating overhead costs here to the product and also the direct costs that would be associated to the product, would, which we can trace directly to the product. You determine the product cost here. So for uh, direct costs here, we can uh, determine our direct materials. They can be directly traced along with our direct labor and then other direct costs as well here. So with activity-based costing, you try to determine all the direct costs that you can trace to the product. But now this is the key here with activity-based costing. It comes into how do we allocate all our overhead costs to the product itself here. So, and those overhead costs, we call them resources here. And it can be both, in this case, manufacturing and non-manufacturing resources. And really what we're talking about is all those support, all those uh, different departments that support the uh, production or the manufacturing or the design and development of this product. And those would be like the engineering department, uh, purchasing department here, buying materials for the, supporting those products, engineering here for designing the products, marketing and sales here for marketing and selling the products, and then all those plant supports and so forth. And then there'd be many other departments as well, but just using these as an example. So what we're trying to do here is we try, we're trying to determine uh, the exact costs here for all of those support departments that is being allocated or going to be consumed here by this product. So all these departments here, they are perform uh, providing some type of service here or they're providing some sort of service here to support the product here. And this product here is based on the services that are being provided they're going to be using those services. So it's going to be based on uh, resource consumption here. These overhead departments are providing a resource here uh, to support the product here, and the product is going to use some of those resources. So what we're attempting to do here with this activity-based costing, we have to determine the various cost pools that are associated with the engineering and all these other support departments. And we'll look at it. It's hard to explain without going through an exact, exact example here, but uh, what we're, let's just look at it and let's look at it in terms of these departments. Say for the engineering department here, or the product engineering department, they're uh, designing, redesigning, and developing products here uh, that they have here that being manufactured on the floor here. They either have new designs or they have existing products that are on the floor. So for our existing products that are on the floor, we have to uh, determine how much engineering expense is going into each of those products. So what the engineering department would do here is they determine their total costs here that they have for a specific uh, situation. And this is the case here where we're going to get into the total cost or with these cost pool and also the allocation basis here. So the engineering department has activities here that they're providing here as a resource that's going to be used for the product here that's sitting in production on and being produced. So we would have to take all those engineering costs that they have here and lump them into a cost pool here and then there would be an allocation base and that's would be based on oh no no so say for example they're at a million dollars here that they have budgeted or what they have here for the year for the the engineering support and it would be based on some allocation base it either could be on the hours that they're putting in here the engineers that are putting in here uh, to support the product or it could be on some manufacturing orders and so forth and the same would be for the purchasing department here they're going to have a certain amount of money here and they'd be going in to a cost pool here and that total cost say again two million dollars here for the year or something like to support those products that are here on the floor and then the allocation base it could be based on the number of purchase orders or the number of parts that they're ordering here to support uh, to support those costs. So we're going to have these uh, costs, what they call driver cost drivers here. And the same for uh, all the other departments, marketing, sales, and so forth. They're going to have certain costs. So we're trying to lump all these uh, costs here into different cost pools based on the 
activity or the service that's provided. And then we also have to come up with that allegation base here, so whatever that is. So looking at it in terms of the plant here, uh, there might be certain utilities that they're providing, like the electrical utility, the water utility, and so forth. And then the allocation base in those case for electricity, they may be a certain number of kilowatt hours or gallons of water that's being supplied here to the product, but uh, to the products, I should say. So what we're really doing here with these cost pools, we're looking at the trying to lump together these total costs that we have. So the cost pools here, we're looking at the total cost for the particular activities that's being provided. And we try to uh, uh, get the homogeneous amounts between the different departments here. So we might have engineering, purchasing, and marketing in a certain cost pool based on a certain activity here. But nonetheless, we're looking at the total cost here. So in the, let's say it's $2 million here to the total cost. So the next thing we have to know is the allocation base. And that's really the total units that are being used here. So in the case of the engineering department, you, the allocation base might be um, manufacturing requests or uh, service orders here to support the product or looking at the uh, product redesigns and so forth or they'd be keeping track of their engineering hours. So nonetheless, you're going to have, and the same for all these other things here, that you can, you're going to have to come up with some allocation base. And when we're talking about the allocation base, again, those are the total units. So in the case here of the engineering department, say they had that million dollar cost here for their redesigns or products, uh, product support here. And then the allocation base would be like, say it was... Uh, 50,000 hours or 20,000 hour, hours here, design hours or something. So there'd be some, to, the allocated base here is the total amount that we're looking at here. So in the case of electricity, maybe it's easier to understand. The plant here, you may have a, a $500,000 electrical cost, and that may be based for 50,000 uh, kilowatt hours, or same for uh, gallons here. You might have a million gallons of water, and you'd have uh, whatever, 100,000, uh, a hundred a mil, a million gallons a cost here of a million gallons for water and that would be based on a hundred thousand gallons used in something so nonetheless you're looking at total costs here in your total cost pool and the total amount of units here for your allocation base so those are all based on totals and then the product itself is going to be using these th costs here are they going to be taking and extracting or using a certain amount here the engineering cost uh, the purchasing costs and so forth here and marketing and sales are going to be allocated. So the idea is you're trying to trace and get a real good accurate cost here on how you allocate your overhead here to the product. Okay, so the key here is know your total, when you're talking about these total cost pools, uh, cost pools, you're looking at your total cost here in the allocation base, those are the total units here based on whatever cost pool you're looking at. So now let's just move on from here here. Okay, so the key is here with ABC costing, you're going to have a cost hierarchy of the activities here. So those cost pools that we look at here, you're going to place each cost pool into one of these categories here. So we don't just have the total cost, we have to classify these cost pools by category here. So you're going to have your unit level cost pool. Now this is where each unit of a product is 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 being produced here. So for each of those units of the product, they're going to be using some unit cost here. So for if you got a a, pro, a product A here and you're producing a thousand units of it, you're going to have a unit level allocation here from that particular cost pool. And then for batches, is say you have that product A here, you're running. Uh, a batch through the factory here maybe it included those thousand parts here but it would be for one batch so then you're going to be allocating the whatever's coming out of your cost pool here you'd have to set aside that cost pool here based on a batch level cost so for each batch a certain amount of cost is being allocated for that product here and then you got your product level this is where you're going to su support a specific type of product again you have a cost pool set up based on your product level and then the facility level this is where you're going to be maintaining the facility or plant at a facility level here that's going to be a co separate cost pool and then you're going to have a, a customer level a cost pool here this is where you're going to support a specific customer so you can see here the unit level and the batch levels are 
pretty easy to allocate your costs coming out of those because you know exactly how many uh, units that you're producing here uh, of that particular product and then you can allocate your costs out of those out of that cost pool based on the number of, of units here or the quantity here and then the same for a batch level say for you know that you're running two batches through the factory so you can take uh, based on your cost pool here you can take two batch worths of uh, cost out of that cost pool but then the product level the facility level and the customer level those may have to be apportioned out in some percentage and how you track track those here and quite often for uh, these pro product level and facility levels and so forth the people that are supporting these uh, the engineers the purchasing and marketing departments sales and so forth they're keeping track of their time and they're assigning them to the particular product lines that you're looking at here or the uh, particularly facility that they're supporting and also customers here they keep track of them so you can keep track of them in sort of in that fashion okay so understanding your cost pools here have to be broken down between unit levels batch levels product levels facility levels and customer levels here that's based on our ABC cost hierarchy so again unless you're looking at a specific problem here it's it's difficult to uh, explain here but nonetheless understand that you have to have your cost pools broken down based on these five different levels here and those are what we call the cost hierarchy level okay so the next thing here for ABC cost allocation allocation base and that's was that allocate uh, what we were talking about on our how we allocate our costs here or drive our costs in those specific, uh, different cost pools that we had that we looked at so activities here that's really as we mentioned that's either the work or the function that's being provided here by those uh, our overhead departments or indirect departments those are like we mentioned here engineering purchasing marketing and so forth and then the drivers here that's what cause causes the need for these activities we're being driven here uh, for certain product designs or uh, purchasing requests here to support the product on the floor so those would be what's driving the need for the activities that we have here. And then we have those activity cost measure. Those would, we try to break those down into a unit measure here so we can allocate those activity costs on a per unit basis the best we can or a batch level basis and those allocation base for a you know applying our overhead costs and we're really looking at for these activity cost measures of be a frequency this is we be the number of times that the activity is being performed here or it could be based on a duration that's a time consumed for performing the activity or a, a physical or a physical uh, measure here this would be the quantity of the resource that's being processed by the activity so you really need two things here with this ABC costing for those cost pools you got to have your cost hierarchy based on those different levels here uh, categorizing based on our different levels here and for our uh, cost allocation base you got to have those activity cost measures broken down either by frequency duration or a physical quantity all right unless you're dealing with the exact problem it's probably hard to go through and understand but nonetheless you have to have those things so going back to our little problem here our diagram here the the cost pools that we're talking about those have to be broken down here as we mentioned between our unit level batch level product level and facility level and customer level the best we can and then our allocating allocation base again remember that's the total number of uh, alloc uh, our base here our total units here that we have based on our total cost and those have to be broken down between for the activities here based on as a frequency uh, some measure some means of measuring at some unit measure here and we usually are looking at it in terms of frequency duration or physical measure okay so that takes care of our cost allocation base and our cost hierarchy now just to review what we're going over here again again this ABC system is is really a resource consumption model where the resources are being provided here by all those overhead supporting uh, uh, departments for that are supporting our products or our plants here and then the product uh, is being consuming those resources so it's, it's consuming the resources being provided here through all those overhead departments and then the product itself is consuming those resources okay so again the ABC system setup this is where you're gonna first you're gonna have to identify your activities 
you're going to have to determine your cost drivers or what is driving the cost or what is the uh, why why we're actually what is driving those activities why are we performing those activities and they're called the cost drivers here and then you're going to have to set up your activity pools you're going to have to determine the measure determine your cost measure here and then the other thing is uh, to determine our rate or overhead rate here or activity rate you take the total activity cost here you have for the particular cost pool and you divide it by the to total activity quantity or those are the total units here so that's going to give you some allocation rate here or overhead rate here and to determine how much is applied to the product you just take the quantity that you used here the quantity that's being used out of this certain cost pool here times your allocation rate or your rate here that's going to give you your overhead cost that you allocate to the product and then just looking at it in these terms again the activity rate is really a predetermined overhead rate here that we have for the product and it could be based on budgeted amounts but we try to get is the actual amounts that we can the best we can okay so to determine our activity rate so looking at it in terms of the case here where we got just looking at a table here uh, to determine our indirect cost rate here we can look at it in these terms this is based on for each activity we do this for each activity you take the higher cost higher uh, based on a high cost higher higher accuracy or higher accuracy category here mispronounced that here uh, you take that here you'd have to know what category you put that cost hierarchy in for each activity here and then you have to know your total indirect cost based on that cost hierarchy and the activity here and it's also your total quantity uh, for your allocation base here based on for each cost hierarchy and each activity here so your total indirect cost that's really those cost pools that we have set up here and your total quantity allocation base those are really the total units here that go into each of those cost pools so to determine our indirect cost here it's a cost rate here that we that predetermined activity rate that we're talking about you simply take uh, total indirect cost here that you have that's a cost pool again divided by your total quantity for your allocation base here that you have here so for cost pool had based on uh, purchase orders here or something up to support the product say we had a total indirect cost here for uh, uh, purchase orders which might have been on a, a, pro, a, a batch level or a batch level here for a purchase order for a certain batch we'd have a total indirect cost for those purchase orders and then we took based on a to allocation quantity we had a certain number of save example when we're talking maybe to just go back this one more time our total indirect say we had a whole bunch of different purchase orders here for the period here based on some costing hierarchy and we know what our total allocation base would be so, uh, total dollars here of purchase orders for hundred thousand dollars and that was based on four thousand dollars or four thousand purchase orders then you'd be able to call determine your in indirect cost rate based on the dollar amount per purchase order that you'd be allocating to the product not to confuse things and then one last thing here moving over here if we just looked at some basic formulas here, you can jot these down if you want. Uh, the, first off, for the activity overhead rate that we're looking at, that's that overhead rate. That would, in, in doing it for J here, I've got them marked here, I's and J's and so forth. For our J here, that would be the overhead rate for the particular activity. That's just taking your total cost here for the activity, say activity J here, and this is just a numbering system here that you'd go because you'd have any number of different activities anyway you take your total cost here for the activity and divide it by your total annual quantity of the activity itself and that will give you your uh, activity overhead right here yeah, based on the specific activity we're looking at and then for our cost here our total annual cost here for product I let's just say so cost here for product I would equal the direct uh, costs here for product I direct cost plus the sum of our in this case would be our activity overhead rate for the particular activity J here so we had activity overhead rate for particular activity J here times the quantity of activity J times the uh, con quantity consumed by the product here activity J so we got uh, just keep track okay I here let's not get I is the activity here is the quantity of activity J consumed by the product 
of product i here. So you have to go through that here. So you determine the total amount here of your sum for all those different activities times the different uh, activity rate here plus the direct cost here equals your total cost here on the product. And then just looking at it, again, we could go through that. Just to understand here, J, that was the number of the activity, and I was the number of the product just going through our simple equation. And then for looking at our ABC unit cost for product I here, that re equals, really equals the cost here of I divided by a pro cost here for product I here divided by the units here of product I here. That's just coming out ABC unit cost. Not to confuse anything, but if you just jot these down here and follow through it uh, and understand that you got all these different activities that the particular product may be consuming here. So you'd have to know uh, the overhead rate for each of the activities and then you keep and then you have to know the quantity of the activity consumed by the product here and then based on that you can determine your total product cost here for the particular product here. Okay, not to confuse things. But anyway that's pretty much an overview here of activity based costing when you looked at your uh, a, B, you have to have the activity-based cost hierarchy for the activities, and you also had your ABC cost allocation base. And then using those, uh, you have to know those things here in order to get uh, apply those costs here to the product or the service that's being provided.